second thing that's killing this country effort to reduce inequality is that companies that are publicly held, that is stock companies, have for 40 years been steadily moving toward giving more and more of their money to their stockholders and their top management and less and less to their workers and the communities. Now, from the 1930s through the dark ages when I finished law school, we all learned that corporations were not people, but creatures of the state. They got certain breaks for being corporations, like limited liability. In return for that, they had more or less equal responsibilities to their customers, their employees, their communities, and their stockholders. Then what happened? Because you only have to hold the stock a year and a day to get a capital gains rate, which is lower than ordinary income tax, you have all these activist shareholders that don't care if they wreck the companies. They don't care if they force layoffs in profitable divisions. Hillary thinks we should give companies that share their earnings with their employees in a significant way a big tax credit. And she thinks we should stop giving lower capital gains treatment in a year. If you take it out to three years, then there will be no incentive to force companies to spend all their money on their shareholders instead of reinvesting it. And guess what? The evidence is clear. People who invest in companies that take care of their employees and their communities are investing in companies that do better than most over any 10-year period. Most of them do better over any 5-year period. We need to go back to sharing the work and the welfare and the, the earnings that people make. You think none of these companies can make money if it wasn't somebody working there. And that's a big, big deal. Then we have to make sure that we educate and train a workforce that can do all this work. Beginning with what a lot of these teachers do. She believes we've overcomplicated this federal role in education. If you look at the best performing schools in the world, they all have two things in common. They have really good teachers that help each other get better and they have principals that know what the heck they're doing. You know, it's not rocket science. They also have a definable culture in every school, and it can be different from school to school depending on what the needs of the kids are. But she wants the, the education department to give back to supporting quality teaching and quality principals, and she believes that's the best way to raise student performance. That's what they have done all over the world. Second thing is, she wants every student to be able to go to college, community college, an advanced training program, and emerge from it debt-free. Now, it's a big difference between debt-free and free tuition for everybody. And I think she's got the better side of the argument. Think Ohio, okay? The cost of college has exploded. It's gotten worse because state legislators, many governed by Republicans, have to give some money to the public schools constitutionally. And if they want to cut taxes and do other stuff, what are they going to cut? The colleges and universities. What are the colleges and universities going to do? Raise tuition and behave more like private schools. If you have tuition free for everybody, then all these legislators will think, oh, goody, we can make them raise it some more. And pretty soon all the kids will be in trouble again with debt. What Hillary wants to do is say, look, if you need free tuition, we'll give that to you. And not just at public institutions, but at historically black colleges and universities and other small schools for first and second generation Americans and, and public and private schools that keep their tuition modest and their graduation rate high. You should be able to qualify and get your tuition paid if you need it and get more help if you need it. But for upper income people, we should pay our own kids tuition because we're going to have to raise some revenues from higher income people, not because we resent them, but because that's where the money is. Only the top 16% of us have made any money in the last eight years. And that money ought to be used to put the rest of the American people to work in good paying jobs. We shouldn't be just recycling it to pay tuition. But if you have debt-free tuition and debt-free costs, 
you help the people that need tuition. If they need more, you help them. And then you give every student the chance to do 10 hours of work study a week. Guess what that does? They not only earn money, but it cuts the cost of operating the colleges so there will at least be some incentive to hold down costs instead of explode them. I think her plan's better. Even more important is all this debt has been already accumulated. She proposed to let graduates who have debt from whatever source, including graduate schools, do two things. One, refinance their debt, just like you can refinance a house. If you did that, college debt is the only thing you can't refinance. Do exactly. you know it's the only law? Yep. If we did that overnight, if we did it today, by tomorrow, 25 million Americans would save an average of $2,000 each. At one thing. Then, she believes we should let accumulated debt be treated like a home mortgage because a college education is a lifetime asset. So everybody should be able to convert it into a 20-year plan that you pay out as a low fixed percentage of your after-tax income so that nobody's going to be burdened by it. Kids can move out of their parents' home. <laughs> if, they took, if they took a job just because they wanted to make debt payments and there's a job over here they love that pays less, they can take it now because their debt payment will go down. If they want to go to the bank and borrow that $60,000 to start a bakery, it won't count against their credit scores. It would just literally lift the burden off. And if they do three years in public service, they can get rid of the debt for life altogether. Woo! Otherwise, Woo! otherwise, at the end of 20 years, the debt's canceled, no matter how much they still owe. 